Hey guys, Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and my review of the Halo Infinite Mega Construct set GNB28 Pelican Inbound. For legal reasons, I do need to disclose that this set was sent to me free of charge by the Mega Constructs group, so thank you very much for that. And also, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to make the video or told what to say. So any opinions expressed throughout the course of this video are mine alone and not those of the Mega Constructs group. So this is it then, guys. The biggest set in the Infinite line so far, a 2024-piece two-in-one Pro Builder set. This set comes as a 10 plus rating on it with just cause, I believe. This set is definitely more involved than anything I've built previously with Mega Constructs, certainly more involved than the previous Pelicans. For this review, I'm going to focus purely on the Pelican build. There's far too much to discuss to try and squeeze in the alternate build of the UNSC base in one video. So I'll create a separate video for the UNSC base at a later date. Now this set comes with three figures and the figures are simply listed as the master chief a hunter and the pilot now we've seen this along with some of the other sets that i've reviewed it is unfortunate that i'm guessing mega constructs were unable to list certain names of characters in these sets which is also possibly the same for the halo heroes line that i reviewed and i said that they weren't named characters i suspect as time goes on and the game is released that we may find these do in fact have names. The pilot, for example, is supposed to be a key part of the storyline in Halo Infinite, yet here in this set he's just listed as the pilot, and I can only assume that was for confidentiality reasons between Mega Constructs and 343. So it's a shame, but I'm sure we'll find out his name at some point in the future. Once again, I feel Mega Constructs have done a good job with the box art on this set. They've got some nice pictures of the interior as well as the alternate build and also the Pelican in its opened up play feature mode on the back of the box. But that's enough about the box. Let's talk about what's inside it. Now, first off, I want to talk about the build experience. I'm going to show you some of the speed build video that I produced a week ago. You can watch that whilst I talk. Now, the actual build itself was thoroughly enjoyable, incredibly satisfying. This build is a next step level of building, definitely for Mega Constructs. There's lots of new techniques in here. There's a few new parts as well. And from a quality standpoint, no issues whatsoever. They really have nailed the quality. This thing went together effortlessly. There was a few minor issues with some small parts that I have had before, but it's a fair trade-off. The very small pieces that are like a one by one plate with a side stud on either side or one side, they can be slightly tricky to put certain bits together, like the rocket pods on the underside of the wings. They're a great little build, but they are a little bit fiddly. They may be a bit of a struggle for young hands. But as I said, those parts are incredibly useful. So once you know how to manipulate the bricks to get them all to click together, it's completely fine. But if it's your first time, you may struggle with them slightly. So all in all, an interesting and enjoyable build that went together well. I'd be very surprised if anybody's disappointed in the build process of this set. Another thing that I was very pleasantly surprised with was the amount of pieces left over after you've completed the Pelican. You can see here, there's not a huge amount of pieces. I had deep concerns that although this was a 2000 plus piece set, I was worried only 15 or 1600 pieces maximum would be used for the Pelican and the rest would be there just to build the UNSC base. It doesn't seem that that's the case at all. I think the main focus was the Pelican. So now that the Pelican's built, it's time to find out whether all those additional pieces were put to good use by taking a look at a few comparison shots of its predecessors. We're gonna start off with the original Pelican dropship, still a fan favorite to this day with almost 1,000 pieces less than the current build. It's still a very nice display piece, although having recently built this myself, I must say it's a very basic build compared to today's standards. But as I say, still a very nice set to have. Bringing alongside it the Pelican gunship, which was released, I believe, four or five years ago, maybe even six years ago now. I haven't Googled it to check, but it is an older ship. Now, obviously, this is a different variant to the Pelican from the 343 era. Now, a lot of people aren't a big fan of this style of the Pelican. I do still like this Pelican. They're just different variants. I'm glad we've got a different variant, just like the NMPD. I don't have that Pelican, but I sure wish I did. As many variants as possible, 
that's a win in my book. So there's the Pelican gunship. As you can see, slightly more pieces involved with this one. Definitely a more interesting build in my opinion, but all in all, a very similar sized ship compared to the original Pelican. And so here it is. How big is the new Pelican? Well, there you go. See for yourselves. Considerably larger than both of the previous Pelican designs that Mega Constructs have designed. Now, although I would say this Pelican is loosely based on the original Pelican dropship from Halo Combat Evolved, clearly you can see side by side alongside the original ship that Mega produced, there are some obvious differences, but I'd imagine this is mainly down to the evolution of the design process through Bungie and 343. I suspect this is still supposed to be based on a D77TC Pelican dropship, but to be honest with you, we won't know until we get more information upon the game release. It could be a completely new variant that we're unaware of because we haven't been introduced to it yet. So we can't really comment on how accurate this ship is or whether this bit's right or that bit's right because we just haven't seen enough of the in-game Pelican for Halo Infinite yet. Before we crack this thing open like an Easter egg and find out what surprises lie inside, I just want to go over some of the exterior detailing and functions first. There's a whole host of printed pieces that come with this set. Exterior-wise, you've got UNSC badges on the side of the cockpit, the tail section, and also the side of the landing gear. You've also got printed pieces for the intake for the engine on the top of the tail section with two very small one by one printed tiles for hazard warning triangles. You've got a similar affair for the air intake pieces just to either side of the cockpit as you can see here again with some two by two printed tiles to resemble those hazard warning triangles. And finally on each wing you have a three by four tile with a UNSC emblem printed on it. Okay then guys it's time to see what this bad boy can do. As with most pelicans it's got the universal tilting wings on their ratchet system which works very well so you can put these at almost any angle that you want obviously if you take it off the ground they will actually go all the way around 360. you can see it's got these rocket pods here with a nice printed tile on the front and they've also put these sections here which are on these tiny little ball joints just to give the front of the engine pods just those nice little covers just so you're not looking at emptiness in there it's quite a good idea that they've done that well a couple of lights on the front as we spin it around to the back you've got a similar affair here great details on these engine pods i really enjoyed just push that back on a little bit really enjoyed building these they a great little build each one and although you've got repetitiveness from one side to the other obviously they are mirrored but other than that the builds the same not boring in the slightest they're just a pleasure to build great design you've got some covers on the front here where they designed to be air intakes i guess but they've just got covers there instead when it comes to the landing gear, this is one of the interactive features which I wasn't really sure how it was going to work until I put it together. And even as I was building it, I wasn't entirely sure, but it's actually very clever and quite effective. You've got this section here, this little button here just pushes in and out as you can see. So if you pull this down, it clicks and locks there. And if you push that in again, goes past it again and then it pops out again it locks it that now locks the landing gear in the down position if you want to put it back up again you just simply push that and it snaps back up this is all done with rubber bands on the other end of this pin going through here so really pleased with that i think that's a nice little feature you've got there it's definitely an improvement in the on the gunship landing gear that's for sure that was all a bit sort of floppy and dangling around so yeah really pleased with what they've done here with this landing gear when they're both down it stops the ship from rocking too far back if you're playing with anything on the front end if we just spin it back around you do actually have proper landing gear undercarriage which is quite hard to show but this actually will fold back up underneath and is stowed away very nicely when you bring it back out put it into this position it does lock so it supports the pelican also a good time to show you the 
nose gun as well, which can be tilted up and down and spun around from side to side. When it comes to access to the Pelican without opening up the back end completely, you've got three points of access. You've got the cockpit, which is a very nice new piece. And I'm so pleased they decided to go with clear plastic for the windows on this cockpit. I'm not big fan of when they put the blue or the yellow colors on. I much prefer clear on the aircraft, but as you can see, the cockpit for this Pelican is huge. You can have the pilot in there, you've got the chief behind, and also you can go right through into the troop bay. You've got right through this section, troop bay at the back. So yeah, really big step forward in the design of this Pelican. Whilst we're in here, there's a nice printed console for the pilot there. And you've also got two printed readouts giving you the status of the Pelican, one on either side of the corridor going back into the troop bay, which are very nice printed pieces. Identical, but one for each side. You've also got access to the troop bay via this hatch here, which again, they've had this on both of the other, pe other Pelicans to be able to access the troop bay. And then finally, you've got the rear load bay door, which just hinges down like so, allowing you access straight into the troop bay from the battlefield. Now, when it comes to opening up the back, before I open that up, I just want to say at this point that one of my big concerns about this set was that they would have compromised the overall look of this pelican for that play feature at the back i was really worried that they would have made it obvious that you know it opens up at the back and i thought that would take away from the overall design but i've got to say from nearly every angle i look at this pelican from it looks fantastic you can see from the back here obviously yes there's a line down here i think that would be there almost regardless you could have put tiles the other way if it didn't open up but it would make no difference to the overall look of the pelican so i'm absolutely over the moon that it doesn't appear obvious that the pelican opens up so in my mind from an exterior standpoint there's been no compromise at all to this having the play feature which i know some people are more pleased about than others. Let's see how this thing opens up. In some respects it's simple, but in other respects it, you do have to do things in a certain order. Now I'm going to have to remember how, how you do it. You can't just take the cover off the back. This piece here comes off and then you open it up. But if you open it up without putting the wings in the right position, it all wants to pop off. It, you can't do that. So first thing we do is lift the wings right up like so and then you also have to lift these up from memory to get them out of the way as well and you've got these tabs at the back it just stops them from interfering with the with the back section as it opens so now hopefully if I undo that piece and just, they're just on poppers in the back, so it does come off relatively easily. You can then, no, that didn't work. Okay, so I got that bit wrong. You also have to lift this bit up as well. That's what was stopping that there. And then you can open it right up. Put the ramp bay down and there you go. Full access to the interior. So we'll take a quick look at the interior now whilst we're here. In the back, you've got a very nice printed tile giving you the readout of the status of the Master Chief and his armor. You've got one seat, which I know has caused a lot of controversy, but I'm gonna come back to this one seat in a minute after I show you the rest. So this part here is for the Chief to actually be suspended from. So if you get your Master Chief figure, you can actually Put him onto this pin here and it's designed to replicate the scene in the trailer that i'm sure we've all seen so you can just suspend him there when he's being brought back online by the pilot so you can reenact that scene with the help of that little lever there so as you can see you've got a couple of nicely printed tiles either side here you've got a weapons rack on the side here and then a fire extinguisher 
just over here, which again is a nice little feature. Now all of these bits here, these are the rubber band sections, which you can see if I push this here, it's doing that, which allows the legs to come back up. Or if I just pull it, those legs just pop back up into place like so. So that's all done from these rubber band sections here. These ones here are what give the legs the spring up and these are what keep them locked in place. Coming back to this one seat that we mentioned earlier, I made the point earlier on in the video that we don't actually know what this set is based on. This could be the exact replica of an in game Pelican that has one seat, in which case everyone would say, wow, good job, Mega, you've done a brilliant job recreating that. So until I see that, I don't really want to comment on whether this is a good thing or a bad thing at having one seat. What I will say, for those of you that were very vocal on saying you would prefer to have more seats than the play features, because these sections here obviously interfere with seating area, I've no doubt in my mind that many of you that feel that strongly about it could relatively easily modify these sections to put extra seats in. You have three studs on the floor here and three studs on the floor there. That's a total of six studs wide in that troop bay. The Pelican gunship is only eight stud wide. So without a doubt, there is plenty of room in there. It's not that the space isn't there. It's just been chosen to be used for something else. But at the end of the day, that's what Mega Constructs is all about, making it your own. So I wouldn't let it stop you from buying this set. And to be honest with you, now that I see it, I quite like the setup the way it is anyway. I don't feel that I personally need the play feature, but it certainly doesn't detract from the set in my opinion. Okay then, so let's talk figures. Now, this figure is listed as a hunter, not a banished hunter. Now, we know other sets are listed as banished sets and banished figures, so I'm not sure why. It's clearly in the colours of the banished colour scheme. It's the same figure from what I can see that came in the Warthog Run set a year or so ago where you got two of them. So I personally think these are a very nice mould for the Hunter. There's a huge amount of detailing across the figure and I personally don't see that there's anything to complain about with this figure. Now I'm not 100% sure again how accurate this is to the in-game Hunters assuming will we, we will see this figure in game because again we haven't seen it yet so i'm going to reserve judgment there and i'm just going to say i like what i see and i think the detailing and the finish on this hunter is absolutely incredible you can see for yourself the paintwork and the detailing is absolutely pin sharp and it's always nice to get a figure in a color we haven't seen before next up we have our unnamed pilot now this mold is slightly different to the mold they've used for the marines in this line and since that his feet are molded into the legs you can't move the feet like you can on the marines as you can see he's wearing a blue undersuit or overalls with his sleeves rolled up he's got some sort of body vest jacket pilot thing on which i'm not really sure what that's called and he's got a belt with straps that come down hanging down which i'm assuming he can shove over the top of his shoulders. You can't actually do that unless I've not tried. Possibly you could flip it upside down now I think about it. I may have to try that in the future, but again, don't quote me on that. You might have to give it a go yourself. Now in regards to his head, facial hair and everything, they've done a relatively good job. Some of it's a little bit off, but to be honest with you, you as I've said before, they, they're never 100% these figures. And for the size they are, I think that's about as good as it gets for mass produced stuff. So. He's got a helmet that obviously he can remove with a microphone piece coming down the left hand side of the helmet, which is all painted silver, that part. So yeah, generally a pretty good figure. Uh, very keen to find out who this character is in the game. Finally, we come to the Chief. Now, this looks like exactly the same mould as was used for the Warthog Rally Set Chief. Now, I said in that review that I thought he was my new favourite Master Chief figure. I really do like this armour, but now that I've opened this set, as you can see, this, this Master Chief has got additional paint on him. Along all the edges of his armour, they've got a brushed silver effect, which to me just makes this armour pop even more. It just gives it that weathered look, just like we saw in the trailer recently released for Halo Infinite. 
As for the rest of him, it's pretty much the same story as that Warthog Rally Chief. Black undersuit, very good detailing on the armor as a whole. His paint scheme on the visor for this one is better than I had on the Warthog Rally, so very pleased for that. And I also suspect that this figure will also be unique to this set. Could be wrong, but with that brushed silver paint application, for me, he's definitely one for the Keeper collection, that's for sure. So that just about covers my review for the Pelican side of this set. As I said earlier, I will do a separate video for the UNSC base and cover all the bits that I may have missed on this review. I know we didn't talk about the weapons here. I'll go over those in that UNSC base review as well. But in general, for the Pelican side of this set, I have to say I'm really pleased. I think it's a great set. I think it's an absolutely brilliant looking Pelican. I'd probably go as far as to say Certainly the most enjoyable build of the Pelican so far. And in terms of looks, I think it's possibly my favorite looking Pelican as well. I think they've done an absolutely great job here. And I can't wait to see how closely it resembles the in-game Pelican for Halo Infinite. So if you enjoyed the video, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.